Hey guys, so a very interesting article on inside trading and Magic the Gathering on the wire. Uh, definitely, you know, you have all the MTG personalities in it. But I wanted you to read this paragraph from it. Chillicott would soon remove Chapman, who was the source for the inside trading information about Pioneer, from his Discord server and from his entire MTG price enterprise. Chapman says it's because Chillicott was threatened Chillicott dismissed this and pointed to an incident from June of last year when Chapman collected more than $10,000 from people in his Discord to acquire and distribute 96 boxes of special Japanese cards which were never acquired or distributed. Customers did not get their money back, although Chapman says he's been slowly refunding them out of pocket. Chapman, by the way, does not have a job. He lives in Ireland. And he does MTG finance full time, according to this article. So how is he exactly going to refund them? The answer is he's not. So imagine paying for your right to be part of this, you know, form. Kind of like Rudy. It would almost be like if Alpha Investments said, you know what, I got these Japanese booster boxes of War of the Spark for $100. That's probably what it came down to. It looks like 90 six investors um I, i'm guessing they paid a hundred dollars a box let's just make a hundred dollars a box and then he did not ship the boxes and then he said oh you know my distributor shafted me whatever you say about alpha investments he is beyond mtg finance in terms of honesty and transparency and this is what we used to have. We used to have, you know, inside information and then you would build your trust and then you would r just run away with the money and then make up an excuse as, you know, there's chargebacks, there's PayPal, there's refunds, eBay. eBay apparently <laughs> will give the buyer whatever they want, you know, and the Black Lotus and the Misha's workshop incident. Same dude, feel really bad. Obviously he was selling his Black Lotus because he needed the money and now he has a, you know, he got scammed. So this is what MTG Finance is. It builds trust and then it scams you. So it doesn't remind me of the stock market at all. It reminds me more of multi-level marketing scams where they, you know, they slowly get you in. They slowly get you in. Or a Ty Lopez, for instance. Uh, they slowly get you in and then you buy their online course, right? And then it turns out to be a copy and paste from like someone else's online course. And then, you know, they're promising you a job, they're promising you a salary of six figures, they're promising you a laptop style life or a nomad. Digital nomads is very common. So I own a marketing agency and I see this happen all the time. It's very common in my field where you have a marketing guru and they charge a bunch of money for who knows what and you know, then they build up their credibility and then they go for the one big scam, which would be the $10,000 of Japanese or the spark, which was never received. Um, imagine, you know, being one of those 96 people on the Discord. You're already paying monthly. It's exactly like Rudy, actually, now that I think about it, because they're paying a monthly uh, subscription rate to be part of the Discord to get this great deal. And then the great deal happens, they pay their money, and it's gone. And then when the a guy with the inside information about Pioneer is asked, you know, why he was kicked out of the Discord, he said uh, because, you know, he was threatening to the Discord owner. Which, it's just bad branding. Like, if this were to happen to, like, any other company, like MTG Price, other than MTG Price, it would probably destroy the reputation of the company. But for whatever reason, this makes the company more notorious, right? And the MTG, I, I, I've talked to James Chillicott, and I do remember vaguely that he was threatening to legal action. And I'm a lawyer, so I'm not really afraid, and he's from Canada. And I know that he's threatened legal action before on Ma Matthew Sterling. Um, there's a video that Matthew Sterling has about James. And it's basically my interaction with James as well back when I was a lot younger and I had less money. So I think overall, like I get what James is trying to do and most likely he'll watch this video and he'll make some snarky remark or something because that's what he did. That's how I met him. I didn't know who he was in the very beginning. I actually had a different channel, new law student. I was a law student back then when I created the channel 
and I didn't know who he was. He just kind of interjected himself into it, and you know, I would be ashamed that I let my Discord, which was paying me money every month, get scammed by this dude. Okay, I would be ashamed. You know, I would take responsibility for that, and I would pay them out of pocket too, because, hey. Somebody should have told these people not to give this dude $10,000. And this is the action. This is what happened. This is what James said. He said this exact... Uh, and only in magic is this viewed as like a positive or even like... In any other... Imagine having a... Imagine having a Discord where people pay you money to be part of this Discord. And then your user base got scammed by supposedly... A individual that's very close to you that has been feeding you inside information about Pioneer and so on. Like, is it your responsibility? Is it your responsibility that these people on your Discord got scammed by what and never got their money back and they were, quote, slowly being refunded by pocket, which does not sound very good to me? Um, okay, great. You banned him finally, but. There were no signs of this. Like, I don't know, maybe him giving you inside tra trading information that he was kind of a scammy individual. I don't know. I would never want to be associated with any of these stories. They don't make anyone look good. Uh, really, like, it's... You, so you engage in inside information to potentially make thousands of dollars. And one of the cards he was going to buy was Voice of Resurgence, which is not even a great card did you realize like if you delved into Pioneer, the cards that you wanted are Supreme Verdict, Thoughtseize, all the cards I have that you would naturally get buying collections. Like it's so weird to me that these people are going to go out there on inside information and buy these cards the two days before, a day before uh, the announcement and they expect A, to have these cards shipped to them, as we've seen from eBay. The buyer can just be a douche and not ship you what you bought. And many stores do that, and they get criticized all the time for doing this. Or B, the format is actually not taking off. Due to the pandemic, I don't think anybody who bought the Pioneer cards made any real money because there wasn't enough time. There wasn't enough Pioneer events to deck brew or whatever. Um, and, you know, how's Pioneer doing today? The answer is not very good, apparently. Because where are you going to play Pioneer today? Seriously, where are you going to play? MTG Arena? Nope. There's no offer Pioneer. Magic Online? You, no one should be using Magic Online right now. It will be replaced and all your cards will go down to, go down to zero. Eventually, the developers, um, based on the coding and what type of platform it's coding on, will know, I mean, it's just a very, very antiquated platform. It has been antiquated since it came out. So when I read that, that reminds me a lot of these marketing gurus. They give free advice, and then they give free advice, and then they do that one giant scam. And then they go away, they get kicked out, and they're still part of the community because the community still accepts them, and then they continue to do that. Um, there's a really interesting channel on YouTube called CoffeeZilla, and a lot of people have invested like their whole livelihoods into many of these scams. And they, it's the same same MO, right? Oh, I'm going to feed you inf inside information, inside information. Oh, you know, I've made this, um, I made you guys thousands of dollars, right? I just made this Discord thousands of dollars. And then like you're like, okay, well, you know, I did okay, I did okay. And then bam. Pay me $10,000 for these boosted boxes. I'm not going to deliver to you. And it's not that this is like an accusation or anything. This is uh, Chili Cot saying that, hey, this dude collected $10,000 from my Discord channel, $10,000 plus from my Discord channel, and look what's happening. Right? Look, look what's happening here. And then the dude saying that he got kicked out because he was frightened. And basically he admits that and said, saying that he didn't receive the boxes in question. Are these individuals that I would want a relationship with? Answer, no. Are these individuals that I would want to invest in? Answer, no. Are these individuals that I would personally feel comfortable paying, you know, what, what accepting whatever information they have? Answer, no. They just scammed their... Forum. These people are paying money to be part of this Discord. 
and they just got scammed and there was no recourse. They literally just lost money. <laughs> whatever you think about Alpha Investments and Rudy and whatever I think about him, at least he delivers the boxes he said he's going to deliver. Not, not every organization is like that. Pico Trade is not like that. Monthly Magic Box is not like that. And you have plenty of people endorsing and supporting these. So at, at the very least, Alpha Investments is legitimate enough to run a business. That's what I would call Alpha Investment, a business. And that means, Tolerant Community College, again, I would call him a business. He runs himself as a business. These smaller MTG financy people, they don't run themselves as businesses. They're just rogue cowboys. And the fact that he was able to collect $10,000 and he's not a store, he's going to buy from another store, so he's a middleman collecting this money. It doesn't make any sense. Like, why wouldn't you just buy these boxes directly? How like much of a discount are you receiving? That I mean, you could buy Japanese War to Spark boxes now for 100 110 I think, on eBay. And they're not even a great like buy. Like I love the anime things. I would rather buy the singles because it turns out that they have the regular art or two, which is crazy. So anyway, I think that inside trading, whatever it looks like, is predatory, and it's just very silly, right? Essentially, you spike the price of a card that you really didn't have any interest in, that you don't even play Magic most likely, to make, what, a few thousand dollars at the best case scenario? Was that really worth your time and effort? Imagine, like, if you took all the time and effort that you were in Discord and you actually, I don't know, learned a skill, learned how to develop code, become a... You know, we pay our computer... We pay our main uh, developer. We used to pay him. He's no longer with us. Uh, moved on to a more expensive job, God forbid, $180,000 a year plus, uh, he was W-2, so he had employee benefits, 401k, insurance, all that good stuff. $180,000 is what you can make a year. If you made that much money, would you really engage in inside trading or would you even really want to scam someone for ten? The ten thousand dollars is really interesting. It seems like that's like the typical big scam in Magic, which isn't even that big of a big scam when you compare it to Bernie Madoff and other real scammers, right? La La Rue or things of that nature. Anyway, bye guys.